Uh, oh, hey, my phone is a ringing. I love when my phone rings some days. I think I like it even better today. I'm going to slide the answer. Good evening. This is Ben Zotti Live. You are on the air. What's going on, man? How are you doing tonight? <clears throat> oh, man. If I was any better, I'd be twins. Let if me. You're any better, you'd wet your knickers. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and not with urine either. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Good Christ. Mm 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 mm. Well, friends, look, you can't see who's on the uh, on the end of this phone, so I will tell you if you don't recognize uh, the velvet tongue devil on the other end. It's none other than D. Calhoun. Hello, D. I thought we said hello already. Yeah, we did, but I didn't. T they didn't know it was D unless they're like really smart. Hello, viewers. <laughs> I feel like Fred Scuttle. <clears throat> well, see now you're now you sound like me because you're calling them viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Oh, it's always a wonderful thing to hear from you. <clears throat> yes. Well, that depends on who you are, I guess. Well, I'm Ben Zotti. I, it's always wonderful to hear from D. Calhoun to me. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm not burning books anywhere. It's, I'm, <laughs> it's always good to be heard, too. Yeah, man. I'm reading books. I'm reading books like a champ, uh, but I ain't burning any of them. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my copy of Mouse to get here. Um, somehow that one had completely gotten past me until the uh, hijinks in Tennessee, and then I'm like, oh, I need to check this one out. I read a little bit of it online. Uh, I found it on uh, archives.org and looked at a few pages of it. I said, yeah, I, I need to have this. I need to, you know, I need to read it, but I also need to have it. It needs to be sitting on my shelf. So, um, of course, you know, myself and millions of other people felt this that all at once, so it's uh, taken a while for it to get here. <clears throat> I'm with you on that. I'm totally with you. Oh man! So tonight, I, I'm I'm absolutely. I know you're aware of this. Tonight, of course, is the four year anniversary of the final Iron Man Band uh, live performance. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and in some ways doesn't feel that long and in other ways it feels like just the complete opposite um uh, what a night that was um just just pure emotion um laughter one minute tears the next and uh you know i think we uh i think we did we, we gave al a send-off that he would have wanted you know us kicking people's asses with his music um, <coughs> Yeah, I, I think he would have loved it. Um, you know, we did the <laughs> did the first benefit for him several weeks earlier at the depot, and uh, I played that solo, Lou, uh, with Lou, and uh, Mott came up, and we actually did two Iron Man songs in my solo set. We did um, Fallen Angel and Black Knight um, acoustic. It's the first. It's the only time that I've played with a drummer doing my solo stuff. And then it was suggested to do an Iron Man set at the Patriotic Club, you know, for the for the final uh, benefit tribute. And um, I honestly didn't know how that was going to work. I'm like, who can come in and, and play Al's parts? And uh, Lou, of course, as a, I mean, we're all great friends with the Wrath of Typhon guys, but. Uh, Lou and, and Bill go way back, and Lou suggested, hey, Bill, you know, loves the band, knows the shit, um, and uh, he had the uh, unenviable task of uh, basically filling in for Al at that last Iron Man show. That, um, yeah, that is, that is, I mean, it is a tremendous honor, but I would call that uh, unenviable <laughs> yes. That, I mean, they're, they're humongous shoes to even put on, much less attempt to fill. Right. And we opened with the Fury, and uh, in the first verse, uh, Bill's guitar just cut out, gone, <laughs> for a couple seconds, and then it was back. And to this day, we insist that was out going, I'm watching you. I'm watching. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> um but yeah, Bill came in and just killed it. Um, he, uh, he he played to the spirit.
spirit of the music. Um, and he, he was, you know, on the ball to the point where we were actually able to do something from each album. We, uh, we did black Knight off the debut. We closed with black Knight. Um, the fury off of, uh, the passage that I already mentioned, um, for Generation Void, we got in On the Mountain. From I Have Returned, we got in I Have Returned. And then from South of the Earth, we got in uh, Worst and Longest Day, which you played earlier, and um, The Horror Confession. Um, so we, we were able to touch on uh, every era of the band, as it were. And I think that was important, too, to uh, just to, to, to cover the, the scope of it. And um, it was just... It, it was a night we definitely did not want to have to have, but we didn't get to choose that. We did have to have it, so we went out and, and did it with style, I think. And, uh, you know, it was very bittersweet, but um, just great memories from that night. Yeah, most, <clears throat> most definitely. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a fantastic night uh, for metal here in Maryland. I, I mean, we do have... Quite a few wonderful evenings uh, here in our tiny little state, but that that was definitely uh, one for the record books. Yeah, and um, one of my um, one of the one of the things that stuck with me that from that night was uh, we're prepping to go on and just on stage getting things you know dialed in and whatnot, and I look out and standing in front. Um, back sort of by the line of tables with Jessica Huffer. And she came all the way from Chicago uh, to be there. And she was standing there, and she and I have talked about this. I've mentioned this to her, so I don't feel bad bringing it up here. Um, she was standing there alone, and she looked absolutely lost and was in tears just looking at everything. And, um, you know, somebody's asking me something, and I basically pushed them aside. I'm like, I've got to do something. I gave her a big hug and thanked her for being there. Um, but just seeing that, and that's the kind of impact that Al had on people. Um, you know, his his passing, you know, affected a lot of people. Um, and to be able to, to at least celebrate him the way we did um, with friends and everything. Um, couldn't ask for a better way to uh, to wrap everything up, you know, where Iron Man was concerned. Yeah, yeah, I, I <laughs> I'm extremely thankful uh, that I was able to be present for for both of those uh, tributes, benefits, and uh, most especially for the the final Iron Man performance. I, I was really really glad to be there, and it was it was a tremendous uh, evening. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. Bryce, you choked me up again, Calhoun. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got a really bad track record with me in that. I, you know, I, damn you. <laughs> uh, I bring geez. out tears in a lot of people. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not, not always in, in the same way I guess you get me. You, you get me right in, the, right in the gut a lot of times. Right, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. You you pull a lot of ire from other folks. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking down and saying, "You better cry. You better cry. This is sentimental." So. <laughs> oh hell! I hope Iron Lou's listening tonight. Uh, yeah, I hope he is. Iron Lou not being on uh, on any social media is it's really a pain in the ass. I, I wish he was. No, I know. Yeah, when, yeah. when we have the group chats going for the for the shows and everything, where we're talking about gear swaps and gear shares and everything, I've always got to kind of be the <laughs> uh, the proxy for Lou <laughs> yeah. there to find out what the base rig's going to be and, and and that sort of thing. Sometimes I just say hell with it and let him bring his own stuff, <laughs> right? Whether he needs to or not, right? <laughs> now, was that on a lighter note? Was was that one of the shows that Lou went to the wrong location? <laughs> I don't remember the specifics of that show, but um, no, it was it was a depot show, <laughs> and he calls me and he says, 
where's the show tonight? <laughs> and I said, it's at the depot. Man, I went to I went to 611, <laughs> which is, of course, in Frederick, which, you know, when you're talking, you know, North America, uh, Frederick and Baltimore are pretty close. But when you're talking, um, there's a show that we, that we have to start a set in 45 minutes. Uh, Frederick's pretty far from Baltimore. Um, <laughs> so we had a big laugh about it. You know, we being those at the club who were actually at the right place. And um, what are you going to do? You know, Greg asked, what are you going to do? I said, well, when it's time to start, I'm going to start. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Lou made it on time and uh, and we played the set. But that has become a, uh, that's become a big running gag over the years. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh hell, yeah that was that was funny. I, I don't remember exactly what, what, but I was there. I was at the depot. Yeah, but hey, look, I've also fallen for that. I I want like about a year ago. You know, Mitchy hasn't been feeling very well at all for like the last two years or so. Well, one day, uh, one weekend, she was actually feeling, eh, you know, kind of half decent. So uh, we got uh, Mitchy was coming, and uh, our friend Marty. And we were breaking him out, and he was going to come out for a live thing. We go all the way up to Cafe 611. And I get there and walk through the door, and it's not Daryl. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. It's not Daryl. And then I'm looking at the, at the band list, and I'm like, that's not any of the bands that I'm here to see. I was in the wrong month. I was at the right <laughs> venue. Yeah. I don't know how I messed that up. I, I have no idea. So, I, I mean, I was, like, stupid, had money in my hand. I could have, like, actually gone and, you know, went. But I was just – that's not what I was intended to do. <laughs> right. So, I, like, kind of tucked my tail between my legs and got the whole uh, – yeah, 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 Laura remembers that. I I, I did that dumb shit. I, I Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the whole way home, like, like Marty was, like, teasing me, and Mitch, he was like, I cannot believe – that I finally feel half decent enough to make it out. You dragged me all the way to Frederick to walk through the door and, like, turn around and leave. <laughs> that was the trial run, you know? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. At least you're, you're a month early, right? Not a month late. Yeah. It, yes. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So it could have been worse. <clears throat> I, yeah. I, I, that happened. It, well, it definitely could have been worse. I mean, I've, I have went to uh, I went to the Harley-Davidson York Open House one time. Uh I don't know whether that was the week after or, or the week before. I, I did that. I mean, I've done some good stuff. So, yeah, I'm in good company. Or I'm losing good company. You know, whatever. However you want to look at it. Uh, it's not all that uh, unrealistic. Yeah, hey, we're a bunch of lovable scatterbrains around. Here, so <sighs> yes, lovable scoundrels. Right. Oh. I called a scoundrel this week for the first time. It kind of turned me on a little bit. Jeez. <laughs> I hope it wasn't just right now. Please tell me it wasn't just right now. No, it wasn't oh, just right now. Good. And yes, Stephanie, you did buy all my books at Doomfest, and I thank you for that. Well, um, you know what that means? R write another one. <laughs> I have one more story to write, and the fifth one will be done. I just need to really get off my ass. I've gotten into this rut during the day while I telework of <laughs> sitting here and playing Scrabble all day. Um, yeah. And I need I need to get away from that a little bit and, uh, and get this last story written. I think what needs to happen um, since the book release is going to coincide with the album release, I need for Argonauta to give me the release date so I can say, oh, shit, I got to get on the ball. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, so other, well, I think we've touched on that that evening four years ago. Uh, anything else you'd like to say uh, about that? Um, just what a what a thrill it was, and just to when I auditioned for Iron Man, um, I basically went over there thinking, at the very least, I'm going to get to jam with Al Morris for a night, and um, it turned into something a lot more than that. Um, it, it bettered my life exponentially being uh, being a part of Al's world. Um, none of the shit I'm doing now as far as my solo work uh, would have happened without Al because as soon as, you know, that harebrained stuff comes around, it's like 
singer for Iron Man. He's doing a solo album. Well, I was singer for Iron Man because Al begged me to be in his band. So um, it was a great influence on me. Um, he was a great influence on Rob. Rob still talks about Al and that he misses Al. Um, and it was just wonderful to see people come together in a time of sorrow and end up having such a great time. I mean, yeah, there were tears, um, but again, they were bittersweet. You know, we had a lot of fun that night. Um, Lana came out, Al's daughter. Um, and it was just, it was really a good night. It's like I said, it was a night we didn't want to have to have, but we did have to have it. So we made the best of it and we made a great night out of it. And I'll always be thankful to, um, to have been a part of that and to be a part of a scene that can facilitate something like that and make something like that happen. Well, uh, I am certainly thankful that you are part of our, <clears throat> our Maryland metal scene. So thank you for your part in making that evening happen and for everything that you do uh, for our, our little Maryland metal. I appreciate you. Thank you. And I, you. Uh, you're, you're getting us out there on the uh, even bigger stage, so uh, keep doing that, man. Yeah, yeah. Tonight, tonight's a fantastic night. Uh, people are sharing galore, man. Sharing just up, a, up a storm. Sharing uh, is caring. Sharing is caring. Yes, tweeting is something. Uh, whatever rhymes with tweeting. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, friends. Well, I, I had promised earlier. I had alluded that I was going to try, and my plan was to play a live track that was recorded uh, from that evening, and I am about to fulfill that promise uh, to the worldwide listeners. Uh, so, Dee, would you care to introduce this song? You, you've already mentioned the title, because you mentioned all the songs that you played uh, that evening in the set. Uh, you want to talk about this song, perhaps? Um, well, when I, was, when I reached out to you and said, hey, do you want a, want a live track for tonight? I decided to go with this one because during this track was when I introduced, you know, everybody that was on the stage and everything. So, um, and, uh, this was actually a song that was written musically, uh, during the, I have returned era, uh, when Joe Donnelly was, was singing for Iron Man. Um, uh, it was called the Wraith. And then, um, you know, Joe left and I came on board and they wanted to use the music. So, I, you know, wrote new lyrics for it and uh, made it uh, an ode about religion. Um, uh, it's just one of my happy little ditties called A Whore in Confession. All right, friends. You, you're you about to hear it here live, uh, recorded four years ago tonight. D, thank you so much for calling in and sharing your uh, direct memories from that night. Uh, friends, this is live Iron Man or Benzati Live. Song about religion. <laughs>
giggling and uh d calhoun i think you can realize why i'm giggling at the very end of that that yeah uh yeah tell me you know who did that one i recognized it <laughs> that damn thing is a very distinctive yeah <laughs> oh boy that was iron man a whore in confection recorded live for the alfred morris the third benefit concert uh played this night four years ago very hard to believe that it's been four years ago. Uh, but, you know, damn, 